Let's talk Thor. Ragnarok. Note, note. So if you guys haven't seen the film yet, I would suggest to save this video, add it to your watch later, or just save to favorites if you want to, and then come back when you're ready, and then we can discuss it together because I am going to spoil. I saw it today, first day opening, and yeah. Uh, there's they'll there are always spoilers be warned but come back and watch mm. when you're ready I feel like I've been waiting to see Thor Ragnarok since the, I was sitting in the theater when the dark world ended and it finally came and I finally got to see it and now let's discuss if you can't tell I'm team Loki all the way I had my Loki dress on today. I'm wearing my Loki colors. I got my Loki eyeshadow, which you can't see because it's probably too dark. But I am there, and I am Team Loki, and I have been waiting to see my man on the big screen because I am a Marvel fangirl, and everyone knows this. It was a really cool film. I mean, every Marvel film is really great. This one. It just was a normal episode. I feel like it's come to the point of these Marvel films where they're not really branching apart from each other and there's so many cameos and so many surprises that it's basically turned into this long mini series of films and it's just like, okay, another episode, another episode, another episode and it just is on a nice path. I did notice that there was a lot of differences between Thor the Dark World and Thor Ragnarok cinematography style. I know they are two different directors and it does show. They have their unique styles and for the past films they all seem to have that kind of universal formula where even though there are different directors on each film they seem to make it work where it's subtle enough adding their styles in that it's not a big difference. Comparable to DC films where every single franchise that they come out with is a different director and it shows that it's a different director. So this director I, I'm from New Zealand. I cannot pronounce the name, so so there's his name. I apologize. That I'm gonna butcher it, but I don't want to butcher it. So there you go. He's from New Zealand, and I looked him up because I really you can tell it's a lot more fast-paced. There's a lot more cuts where it's like you're zooming into things, you're jumping out of things. It's very very fast. It works really well for this film, but it does show that there's a difference. I feel like they handled everything really well the direction of the film from getting to point a to point b to point c because there's so much stuff going on and this is i feel like now that this phase that we're in is a phase that you have to be aware of all the cameo characters you can't just be like oh it's a sequel let's just pop in and watch it because you know sometimes you can get away with certain sequels and not know what's going on and just figure it out as you go along with it i'm sure there's like you can with this but you're missing half of the jokes and the references and the basic storyline from not understanding all the basis. If you remember as well, one of the things I was looking forward to with this film is the fact that Benedict Cumberbatch was going to be making a cameo in it as Doctor Strange and him and Tom are best friends and I was just waiting for a full out war fight scene between them. Now that did not happen this time, however they will be together in Infinity War, so it's not the end, and it was just so enjoyable to watch on screen the little time that they shared together. The couple of seconds that they shared together on screen was just so fun. It was a very fun film. It really was reminiscent of a lot of the 80s sci-fi. I feel like right now, this is what we're going into. A lot of media right now, such as Stranger Things and It and other stuff like that just kind of took the realms and we have this very 80s, late 70s, early 80s inspired feel to these films, especially the Marvel films. And it felt more of a tie-in from Guardians of the Galaxy with Thor, which actually works because it is a major plot point. The fact that the Collector's brother, Grand Grandmaster, is a major plot point to this film. It definitely ties Guardians of the Galaxy and, and Thor into the same world together. And I'm really excited to see how they will continue in Infinity War. And I know they're not giving us any hints for Infinity War yet. 
so I'm looking forward to it when it actually comes out. But I say it was a pretty solid film. I don't have any complaints about it. I wish there was more Loki, but I really enjoyed the storyline that they gave us, and it was an interesting ride. I wish there was more Loki in it. I always would like there to be more Loki in it, because every time Tom Hiddleston is on the screen, I just I really appreciate it. Because I am literally a Marvel fangirl and a Loki fangirl, and yeah, Team Loki. I really appreciated the cameo that Stan Lee made. That one might have been the best cameo, it was hilarious. The humor was a lot more present in this yet, while having a darker feel. So we had a lot of humor present that balanced the really dark, gritty feel at the same time. And I feel like every Marvel film has an underlining inspiration. And to me, obviously Thor focuses on family issues. In every Thor film you have family issues as a major plot point. However, I also saw a lot of religious undertones with this film and the way they had to transport from Asgard to another home to reach Asgard was total Moses, Jesus, biblical inspiration. So it was interesting to see how that was conceived into a superhero film. So there was a lot of good stuff about it. The humor was good. I still liked Dark World better compared to the three films so far. I think probably because there is more Loki in Dark World, at least. He was more practical jokester, whereas here he's kind of on the line between good and bad, good and bad, good and bad, but it's always in the background. So because he is obviously my favorite, I'm personally biased with that. Everything Marvel-wise is going to be compared to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 right now because that film blew me away. And because the Grandmaster was involved and we got to see a little sneak peek of the Guardian side of Marvel's world with the whole championship and Hulk and everything, I'm it's always going to be comparable and that one is still my all-time favorite Marvel film so far but I love everything they come out with so everything is amazing but now just comparing to each other basically that's what it comes down to but it was a really good film I I, I was very satisfied watching it I five stars anyways like, everything is just amazing as it is, and it opened up a lot more questions to get us prepared for Infinity War, and that's what it all leads up to, so I'm excited. I'm excited to see what's going to come up within this next year of films and the grand master of these films to get to that gigantic finale that we have been gearing up for. So... Short review, not that much. It was fantastic, it was amazing. I love Loki, that's obvious. I'm looking forward to seeing more. So yeah, let me know what you guys thought of it. If you've seen it, I would love to hear how you felt it ranked between everything else in the Marvel Galaxy, the Marvel Cinema Universe, whatever. Yeah, and um, leave a like, share, etc. Subscribe if you haven't that whole drill and as always I hope you have a magical day and I will see you real soon